<laughs> you know me already. Now, what's important today is so important. <laughs> what's important today is so important that every farmer must listen. There's a big challenge now in the fisheries world, especially aquaculture. And what's the challenge? The recurring costs. And the greatest recurring cost is the feeds of the fish. 70% of the food of the cost, sorry, of the cost used in the fish farm is on the feeds itself and the rate. And situations are not helping matters now. Getting the raw materials to make the feeds available. This is going to the roof. And now, farmers want to make profits. Imported feeds, price going through the roof again. So there has to be an alternative. Like we preached in the beginning of the cattle revolution. Go ahead and make your own feeds. Pelletize your own feeds. Now over the years from 2001, when people got enamored in the beginning, 1997 to 2001, everybody was making their own homemade feeds with a small pelletizer. That stuff that looks like what you use for melon. Like we see, the Yoruba folks will call that. Now, oh, they call it, they're using shredding, meat pie stuff. Now, those are the smaller ones. It could help you with wet mash, you know, using chicken intestine, uh, cow fetus, you know, uh, pig effluents, waste fish and all the rest. Just make so you have cake and you're on. But people go lazy along the line. That was the days when fish farming was giving you 300 percent your cost of capital. But along the line, people got a little bit lazy. Pardon me to use that word in quotes. I don't decided to start taking away fast food for the fish. The import started coming in, and it was good as it was. Just give your fish the full pump and go your way. The greatest assignment in the world of fish farming now was regulated with background. And our job is just get the prepared bag from overseas, drop it for the fish, and there you go. And what makes those ones have a place in our heart was because it actually enhanced our laziness on the farm by making it easy for us not to even wait to see the fish response to the food. We just drop it inside the pond and then, you know, just go like, yum, 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 eat, 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 eat. And then, you know, then you come back again and see which one is floating. Okay, that's the leftover. You just need to remove it. Now, that's not a proportion per se. But it's pardonable because the majority of people who pioneer this fish farm business, both the pioneer group and the pragmatists and even the conservatives, most of them, you know this call when you talk about marketing. Now, all of them are all, most of them are part-time, right? So it's easy. You're at your work and you quickly feed your fish and when you come back or before you go to work, acceptable. But now with the reality of the situation, imported fish, our prices have gone to the roof. As of today, I saw the message that feeds has increased from 7,100 naira to about 8,500. Even between yesterday and today, cost increased by 350 naira. I like get per bag. And then cost of fish is still at the same level, wholesale price. So what do we do? We need an alternative to still encourage this laziness. At the same time, make us make more profits. There's a need to do three things. One, focus on the local feeds local ingredients. Two, get a machine that can actually make us utilize the wet mash together with some of the dry. Right? That's number two. So, because you know, um, the machines that do that is called, they are called pelletizers. What they do is that you can only get sinking feet from that, not the floating. Then the third option, I get it, is to now be able to produce the feeds in a floating form, not using wet mash materials now, but then using the dry ingredients like you see on the table now that I'm going to explain to you, and then put it in a machine that's going to be subjected to sublimenter heat and then comes out floating. We call those ones extruders. Now, extruders don't come cheap, it's for the guys with the big pocket. And yet, every farmer wants to grow big. So, when you're small, I do grow big when the machine is meant for the guys that are big. So that's what I've come here to resolve. God, thank God. Continual research has made it 
made us lock in quotes. You know, when preparation meets opportunity, that's what you call lock, according to Richard Branson. Now, what has happened with that is that I met some folks who are into foundry business. They are into manufacturing using machines and all that stuff. And I'm there in the workshop, so don't mind my background. That's why I had to do it in the, in the workshop. Now, what's special about this, my friend? They have a machine that can actually serve as two, two assignments. Serve as an extruder, serve as a, sorry, as a pelletizer to make sinking feeds. And at the same time, serve as an extruder making floating feeds. Did you hear me right? This machine is what? It will do both sinking feeds and floating feeds, extruder. Mr. Fish, say that again. I won't say that again. <laughs> you are it properly now. Now, that's why I'm here. I'm going to do a test today, which I will show you in another video, of the two kinds of feeds that comes out from the machine. I'll show you about the machine later on. Before we go into that, let me just show you ingredients because I wanted to get your formula right. So, like I have on the uh, feed ingredients page of my book, Great Catfish, right? Part of our bumper pack series. I talked about the need to make, uh, I deliberately put 10 kg sample of feed ingredients that you can mix together to make your fish have the right amount of feed combination to give you the right conversion ratio. One kg in for one kg out. You know, it's not like poultry, where you need to use six kilograms of food to get one kg of brother chicken. It's not like pigs. You know, the pigs will use eight kg of food to give one kg of flesh, one kg of pork. I'm not like the cow. I'm not a cow. You remember that music? I'm the cow. I'm the cow. No, I don't want to be a cow because a cow will eat 20 kg of food to give 1 kg of meat. So, fish is the way out. So, I'm here now to actually now make you see how you can still enjoy the benefit of 1 kg in for 1 kg out. And that would be wonderful. More so, when your 1 kg in can be sourced from local ingredients, on the imported level now, it's about 850. One kg of feet. To get you a feed that you're going to sell for 800 naira, I don't think that makes any economic sense. So we're here, we look at feeding grains now. That will bring your bill down from 850 to at least 300 or lower. We need to wait much. So let's get on the business quickly. Now let's look at the ingredients. If you want more, you get it from the book, Red Catfish book, part of our bumper pack series. Now the first one, of course, which is important, you know, catfishes are herbivorous animals. Uh, sorry, uh, carnivorous animals. We are the ones who call ourselves animals. Now, since they are carnivorous, it's man eat man, right? Fish eat fish. So the best food for them will have been to eat somebody like them. Thank God, God you make us carnivorous. Or well, that's like eating guys. <laughs> so one of the things you want to do is to make sure that you give them as much fish meal as possible, and that's why we have this here, the fish meal, right? This is sixty-five percent. Some folks that have the pocket, they want to make it 72%. Hmm, I don't advise. Hey, well, it's okay if you can afford that. I mean, for now, I see everybody's going for this. And some even go for fish effluence. But this 65% for the purpose of the uh, mix we want to do today. Fish meal, right? I might not talk about the percentage today, but let me just show you the ingredients. And then I get down to the business that brought me, to, brought me to do this video today. Now, the second one, this is your animal protein, which is the most important ingredient. It must not be less than 20%. Now, the next one here we got is the plant protein. And then the chief among plant proteins is the soya bean meal. I can look at it. The soya bean. Definitely. You know soya beans. I don't tell you. Now, some folks go and buy soya bean in the market and they expect to bring down their cost. By the way, if you give that soya bean directly to your fish, the fish is not going to grow. Why? Because of the trypsin factor inhibitor. So you have to still fry the soya bean cake to crack the shell before you can you go and separate it before you grind it and then make it available for the fish. Or else your fish will not grow. So it's the one that has been extracted, you know, from factory effluence, which is reasonable. It's going to do the job. The fish will be happy with this. This soya bean meal. Now that's a cousin of it here. This one gives us the plant protein. Because it's got a lot of other amino acids that the animal protein does not have. Then we now got the next one. Sister to this fellow here. Full fat soya. This is going to give us our fats. In Japan, they use sequam larvae. 
No, just things you get from inside palm tree. <laughs> That's a lot of expensive to approach. To approach. All kinds of fat they can use. Some even occasionally try to use palm kernel cake, thinking that um, the oil there will do a lot of job. But the most popular one here is this soya bean cake. If you look at it, if you press it too much now, your hand will start getting oily. So, you have soya bean cake, you have the full fat soya for the fat. Now, let's look at this next guy here. Now, here we now talk about energy. For energy, you need a corn. Right? Carbohydrates to give you energy. Now, this is not corn direct from the, from the farm. If you plant a farm, they plant corn in the farm, in your farm, and you give it to your feed direct, no problem. You reduce your cost, barriers, right? But these are the ones that are being used in factories, and we call it spent maize or spent corn. So these are this is what you're going to use to give your fish energy. Now next to it, of course, I saw something around now, which was the normal corn that is ground there. No problem if you have. Uh, let me see. Okay, I think somebody somebody has it here. Oh, good. Look it. This is direct from somebody's farm, grounded. Maybe for chicken, I don't know. But then you can see the difference between the two. This is a lot more expensive. This one is being used, right? But the, the purpose for energy for the fish is still there, unabashed. So this is better for you. And then we now have for roughage. So that things are, so that your fish will not be constipated. <laughs> this guy comes in with offal, right? For some people, like in again everybody area, depending on your area, you can use rice bran or anything that you feel is available in your area. Now there's a particular page in my book that details it, the uh, the, the Nigeria Nigeria as a nation, and then look at the kind of